How's it going everyone? So today I'm going to go over another algorithm problem, binary tree maximum path sum. This problem is pretty hard. It's asked at a lot of tech companies. I'm going to go over what the problem is asking us to do, the brute force approach, optimized approach, and then we're going to jump into the code. So without further ado, let's get into it. So we are given a binary tree like this, and each node can only have a maximum of two children nodes. We need to find the max path sum in this tree. And so the max path sum of a path is the sum of the node's values. So if we had a path from 10 to negative 5, the path sum would be 0. Or from negative 10 to 20, the path sum would be 10. The maximum path sum in this specific tree would be from 50 to 20 with a maximum path sum of 60. Keep in mind that in order for a path to be eligible as a path sum, the path must be a single line. So for example, this would not be eligible as a path sum because node negative 10's left and right child is in the path. We can only choose one or the other at this point in order for it to be valid. So the brute force approach, we could compute every path sum and simply take the largest of them all. Of course that would work, but anytime you have to exhaust calculating all possible states in a problem, it's going to be extremely slow. Let's jump straight into the optimized approach. So we know we want to calculate the maximum path sum in the tree. This means that we need to have an efficient way to visit each subtree and compute the max. Well, in order to do this, we can start at the bottom of our tree and work our way up. So let's say we have a small tree such as this. If we calculate the max sum at each subtree, and use these computations for parent node computations, this will save us a lot of time. So node two by itself is a subtree with a path sum of two. Node three by itself is a subtree with a path sum of three. Now, if we return both of these sums to the parent node one, all we have to do to find the maximum path sum is do the left plus the right plus the current value that we're looking at, which would be six. Now that we understand the most basic example, let's jump into the algorithm with a big example. We know now that we need to go bottom up, and in order to do that, we can use a post-order traversal. So in a post-order traversal, we go to the left child, then the right child, and then visit the node. If we printed out the nodes of this tree in a post-order traversal fashion, it would look like this. And as you can see, the nodes were printed from bottom to top, which is exactly what we want. Another thing we will need is to have an integer variable called max to keep track of the maximum path sum we come across as we are traversing through the tree. This can be initialized to negative infinity because we can have negative numbers in our nodes. So we're gonna start our traversal at node 10, then we're gonna go left to node five, go left to negative five, and then we're gonna go left again, but that's a null value. So when we encounter a null value, there is no path, meaning our sum at this point is just zero. So we return zero to negative five. Now we're gonna go right, and this is also null, so we return zero. Now at node negative five, we can now compute our new max by doing what we did in the basic example. We're gonna do the left plus the right, plus the current value we're looking at, which would be zero plus zero plus negative five, which is negative five. And negative five is greater than negative infinity, so that will become our new max. Now here's the tricky part. What do you think we should return to node five from node negative five? You would think negative five, since that is the max sum we just computed so far, but we actually need to return zero. So why zero? The reason why is because anything plus a negative number will only get smaller. So if we return a negative five, whatever we sum to negative five will be five less than what it was. Since we are trying to find the max sum, we can bound our sums to zero to ensure we get that maximum. So just to drive this point home, let's say we had a value of 10 and we added that to negative five, we'd get a value of five. But instead, if we bound to zero, we'll be doing 10 plus zero, which is 10, and that's obviously greater than five. So we return zero to node five, and now we're going to go right, and then we go left, which is null, 
And so we're going to return zero. Then we go right, which is null. Once again, we return zero. We're going to compute our new max, which would be zero plus zero plus one, which equals one. And that is greater than our current maximum. Now we need to compute what number we should return to node five. So we're going to do the max between the left and right side, which would be zero. And then we add it to our current value of one. So we're going to return one to node five. And now at node five, we're going to compute our new maximum. So we do zero plus one plus five, which equals six. And that is greater than our current max, which corresponds to the following path. From node five, we now need to choose whether we want to include our left child sum or our right child sum, because we can't choose both. So we're going to say the max between zero and one plus five, which equals six. So we're going to return six to node 10. Now we're going to go right to node negative 10. Then we're going to go left to 50. And then when we go left again, we return zero because it's null. We go right, we return zero because it's null. And then now we're going to calculate our new maximum at node 50. So we do zero plus zero plus 50, which equals 50. And that is greater than our current maximum. Then we do the maximum between the left and right side, which is zero plus our current value of 50. So we return 50 to node negative 10. Then we go right to node 20, go left, which is null. We return zero. We go right, which is null, return zero. Once again, we're going to calculate our new max at node 20. So we do zero plus zero plus 20. And 20 is not greater than our current max, so we don't update it. The max between the left and right will be zero plus our current value of 20. So we return 20 to node negative 10. We compute our new maximum. 50 plus 20 plus negative 10 is 60, and that is greater than our current max. We now need to choose the left or right path. So we're going to say the max between 50 and 20 would be 50, and then we add negative 10 to it with a value of 40. So we return 40 to node 10. Finally, we compute the sum once more. We're going to do the left plus the right plus our current value, which would be 46 and that is not greater than our current max. So by the end of traversing, our max would be 60, which corresponds to the following path. Okay, so let's jump into the code. Our method signature, we are given the root, a tree node of a binary tree, and then we have to return an integer, which is gonna be the maximum path sum that we come across. So the first thing we can do is initialize the max variable that we talked about. So we can come up here and we'll say private int max, and this will be initialized to integer.min value. The reason why it has to be min value is because we are going to have negative numbers in our binary tree. If we initialized max to zero, we could potentially not have the right answer because let's say our binary tree just had negative two in it, the maximum path sum would be negative two, but since negative two would not be greater than zero, we'd return the wrong answer. So that's why it has to be min value. Now what we can do is initialize another function to perform a post order traversal, just like we talked about. So we could say private int post order, and we're gonna pass in a tree node root. So in our max path sum function, we're gonna call the post order function. So we can just say post order of root, and then we're gonna return whatever max is when we're done doing those recursive calls. And now we just need to implement the post order function. So our base case is gonna be if our root is null. So we can say if root equals null, then just return zero. And now we're gonna make recursive calls to the left and right subtree. So we could say int left equals post order of root dot left and int right equals post order of root dot right. When we come out of these recursive calls, this is where we're going to compute our new maximum. So we could say max equals math dot max between whatever max currently is. And then we do left plus right plus root dot val. And then finally, we can say return math dot max between left and right, 
plus root.val. And the reason why we want to do the max between the left and right, just like how we talked about, it's because we want to make sure that we only have a single line going down. We don't want to have multiple branches that could end up in our result because that would not be an eligible path sum. So there still is one thing we're missing in this algorithm. Like how we discussed, we want to make sure to bound negative numbers. We do not want to have any negative numbers that we're adding on line 29. So what we can do is bound the left and right values to zero. And to do that, we can just say math.max between the recursive call of left and right, and then just bound it to zero. So if we have a negative number, it will automatically take value zero instead. So that is it for the recursive approach. Let's make sure the solution works. So the time complexity of our solution is going to be big O of n, where n is the number of nodes we have in our binary tree. Since we're doing a post-order traversal, we have to touch every single node a single time. And then as for our space complexity, it's going to be big O of h, where h is the height of our tree. Since we are using recursion, in the worst case, we're going to have h recursive calls. So that is all I have for you guys today. I hope it was helpful for you. If you like my type of content, don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps out the channel. And if you want to support me further, you can go to my Patreon and you'll get access to my private Discord channel. And with that, I will see you guys next time.